And our stretch of sunny and mild weather in October of 2021 continues, at least uh, east of the Appalachians. I'm in the foothills of uh, the Appalachian Mountains here in western Rhode Island, right on the Connecticut border. This will be the second video I've made in the Arcadia management area for this channel. It's a large purchase area with many tracts of uh, forested land here in Washington County, Rhode Island. And I believe the county north of here is Kent County, which also contains this management area. Many miles of trails for hiking, mountain biking, snowmobiling, um, horseback riding, and a large variety of habitats, especially for those acid-loving plants. And we've got a red maple here that's more on the gold shade of red. Right along this brook here, and we've got some other red maple that's more of the crimson color. And on the drive over here, I saw lots of red maple that was very, very alive in its red color. So we'll take, we'll, we'll, we'll record that today along with a new tree I'm going to add to this channel, which is bear oak, B-E-A-R. I did a little tidbit of information on the bear oak a couple years ago when I was recording pitch pine and um, there was some growing right next to the pitch pine that I had in mind. So uh, we're going to do more work on this bare oak. It grows in a lot of places in eastern New England and southeast New England and down through central Pennsylvania. It requires full sun to maintain itself. So if an area does not stay in full sun, the bare oak will get shaded out. So let's go up on the ledges of Mount Tom here. This is the Mount Tom Trail, and Mount Tom is more of a hill than a mountain, but it has the feel of a mountain. There's a lot of granite ledges up there, or granitic nice ledges, kind of looks like granite. Um, with all kinds of interesting plants growing up there, including the bare oak. It's about a half mile up to the top from here, and um, I know there's a lot of it up there, and there's also a lot of sand plains in this Arcania management area that have trees on them, but often there's... Um, bear out growing between the trees where there's enough sun. And about a 10 to maybe 15 minute walk from the start of the Mount Tom Trail here. We start getting up on these uh, ledges. Thin soil, dry for many weeks of the year, and fire prone. A lot of scrub vegetation up here, including trees that often get quite large like this uh, white oak that can also grow in this scrub form. There's some white oak right there. Again, all gnarled and twisted. Seems to be doing okay up here despite this harsh habitat, but white oak is often associated with deeper uh, soils in the foothills and mid-elevations of the southern and central Appalachians as well. So out here it's got a Kind of created a, a different form here. So the bare oak is almost always in the scrub form, and we're starting to see some along this white oak here. I've got some really good examples right up the trail here. Let's just keep enjoying the beauty of this hike. This is a feel of climbing a much larger mountain without much elevation gain. Just these ledges create a really interesting place just to spend a a short hike if you don't have a lot of time. Not real extensive views from up here, but it's uh has the feel of a larger mountain. And what you see in the foreground here, this scrub form tree is all bare oak. It tends to grow out more than it grows up. And this open ledge here is almost entirely covered with bare oak. I have found some examples of them in the sand plains near here that were actually quite a bit taller than this. But most of these bare oak trees up here um, appear to be dying back when they get to a certain height. So it's more of a scrub form. And... Um, That holly-like leaf. It's starting to get a nice maroon fall color here. 
and that leaf is about two inches long with normally just a couple lobes on the bottom two on the side and one on the top but they can get if you took this leaf and took your rolling pin and rolled it out as the tree gets bigger and in a better habitat the leaves can look quite a bit larger on the uh, trees that are in less stressful environments than this ledge here got several more up the trail here we can look at Got one right below, I mean, right below us here on this ledge is one big mat of bare oak that's growing sideways. And um, it looks like the main parent tree is down in one of these cracks here. And they have some adaptations to survive in such habitats. But again, the top half of this tree has got lichens on it. It appears the top half has died back. It's got that uh, what's called old man's beard lichen growing on it. Usually that's a sign that the branch is dead. So um, it appears that this, the, 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 even though the tree got quite large, for a bear oak it got quite large, it did not sustain that growth. I'm not sure if there was a brush fire up here that burned it back. And now it's regenerating itself. Or if that's just a natural part of their growth. But um, it's covering this ledge here. We'll take some more looks at it right up the trail here. And continuing on the Mount Tom Trail here, we're at the kind of the second set of ledges. There's a little gap between these. And all kinds of scrub form trees up here. Pitch pine. And a real good example of the foliage of this bare oak. Take a better look here. So there's where the name uh, Quercus elisifolia, which is Latin for holly-leafed oak, would come from. I mean, this guy here almost looks like a holly leaf. And um, again, that's not that big of a leaf right there. Maybe as big as half my index finger. And we got one here. Again, about two inches long. On some of these larger trees, the leaves get big enough, they could be confused with other species of trees. But this one has still got its nice uh, summer color. Some of these have already stern, started to turn brown and purple from the time of year it is. So this is what a holly-leafed oak would look like during the middle of the growing season. And we've already seen some that have started to get their autumn colors as well. And this thin rocky soil on top of the ledges of Mount Tom can create many trees that mimic this bare oak in its shrub or scrub form. So let's take a look. We got a couple here. Um, give us a little comparison. And this bare oak over here is getting some nice maroon fall color so we've got two lobes on the bottom two towards the middle and one or two at the top sometimes that one on top has several smaller lobes depending on the leaf so there's our holly shaped leaf with its maroon color starting to develop here in late October. And this plant actually continues on across this ledge. And the way that they can survive an area with such thin soil and an area that is prone to brush fires is, from what I've been reading, they have a taproot system that goes down probably between the cracks in this bedrock and that can survive the heat of a fire by being well underground and the sprouts come back up after the fire is gone. So this guy is growing out more than he's growing up. It's a shrub form. I found some a um, few miles from here. They're actually getting closer to tree height. We'll take a look at those in a little while here. But um, let's go right around the corner here. I've got a scarlet oak that has the same form. But more lobes on the leaves. Two 
two on the bottom, two in the middle, two a third the way down, and then a pointed lobe with many other small lobes coming out the top. So this scarlet oak is only a couple feet high at this point. But one way I can tell it from this bare oak is the branches tend to grow fairly straight. Unless Mother Nature has pruned it, it tends to want to grow fairly straight from this sprout here. And the bare oak just around the corner here tends to be all gnarled and twisted and does not appear to grow straight even if it has the chance. For, for too long it might grow straight for a few inches, but inevitably it seems to uh, get this twisted, contorted form quite commonly, as you can see right here. And we've come about three or four miles northeast of the uh, Mount Tom area with its bedrock ledges. And between the ledge systems in this Arcadia management area, we've got vast sand deposits that go on for quite a long distance and create a very similar habitat for these trees. It's uh, prone to being dry or droughty and uh, prone to fires. And I can tell that just by what's growing here. We've got a lot of pitch pine um, in the canopy here and a lot of gray birch growing alongside here with its arrowhead shaped leaves unlike the oval leaves of the black birch and the yellow birch which are also found in this area so I start seeing gray birch on a sand plain I'm thinking the area is in early stages of succession with lots of sun coming through and just behind this stand of gray birch and pitch pine, we've got a pretty big opening with not much canopy above it. And that opening is being occupied by some much larger bare oaks. Let's pause for just a second and get closer here. And right in the thick of things, I've got some bare oak that's actually 10, 15 feet taller than I am reaching for the sun. Again, that ledge habitat was very limited in how much soil there was to help the tree grow. The taproot had to go down between the cracks in that bedrock to get what the tree needed. Here, this is a dry habitat, but there's plenty of room for the taproot to grow down and um, extract nutrients. So this bear oak has gotten to be more of what we call a smaller tree and not just a shrub form. And here's that holly-shaped leaf. Two lobes on the bottom, two in the middle, and one at the top. That sometimes can have some small forks in the end of it as well. So, um, not much color in these right now. They've all kind of turned kind of brown. But I can tell by the leaves and the form of this tree that it's not a black oak or a scarlet oak. Um, it has multiple sprouts. Let's just pause one more second here. So we've got multiple sprouts growing from the same tap root, just like we did on that bedrock ledge. But again, it can get taller because of the fact it's not so limiting here. The dry soil alone is one thing, but dry soil with not much soil at all on those ledges really makes it tough on those plants. But they do um, dominate some of those ledge systems around here. Here's another one more in the shrub form. So not quite as scraggly looking. And I mentioned on that ledge that they don't grow straight. At least on the ledge they don't. Here they've got some fairly straight branches before they start going in all directions near the top of the tree. So um, what you find as far as the form of a tree depends on what it has to go through, um, depending on where it's living. But it definitely gets this scraggly form near the top of these branches. So this is our bare oak, B-E-A-R, but you can often think of it as B-A-R-E because of the fact it grows on bare rock and areas with thin soil.